Evolution, understanding the art of human connectivity. Relationship building, the epicenter of opportunity. Renaissance Evolution offers the insights, perspective, and new formula for the sustainable collective growth of global markets. Through its understanding of the intricacies of human interaction, foresight into future trends, and network of global influencers, the Renaissance Evolution Academy presents a new executive curriculum and C-suite position. The Chief Cultural Officer. It's all about connecting. The culture of knowing what's next. Disrupting one another. Bringing people together to help each other. Seeing the impossible as possible. Creating greatness together. The Chief Cultural Officer. Shaping the evolution of the global economy. Good morning to this Chief Cultural Officer Certification course. Renaissance Evolution works to stimulate intercultural dialogue and create a positively disruptive and innovative methodologies that facilitate the interaction of people, academic institutions, government, and business, both locally and around the globe. An understanding of culture and its place in history can help us build a better future based on conflict prevention. We cordially invite you to become part of an high-level network worldwide of executive officials and academics, an expert in understanding high-level cultural, political, business interaction in today's globalization, giving you the edge of cultural diplomacy. But the uh, chief cultural officer uh, idea is what we're presenting here. Hopefully today you get a, a sense of not only what this is, what the usefulness is, but we're really looking at this as an opportunity to create what's unique to this chief cultural officer position, which is ambassadors. So just like a chief cultural officer would be an ambassador within their organization, we're hoping that you get excited about this CCO, C-suite kind of situation, and you start to say, hey, this is something I want to promote in the circles that I'm in. I want to engage in this network. I want to move forward as an ambassador. We've got a, an agenda for you to review just briefly. We are already into our uh, curriculum overview, and that's what we're about to do next. We're then going to go through each of the pillars individually and punctuate those with case study situations. So I'll talk about that in just a second, what that structure looks like. It's going to require you to engage with the content reflect on your understanding of what's present and put it into some kind of real world context. I'll play it by ear to see what kind of appetite you guys have for that kind of exercise. But the basic idea is that you'll engage and come back with some kind of report or um, a reflection. And there are some questions I'll ask just to stimulate your thoughts. We'll have some short discussions around that. And we've got time to do that. That is the context of the learning in this space. So your discussion is really critical to that occurring. The process that is current here really is the recognition that this chief cultural officer content is the core content for a number of implementations, for several implementations. And uh, Roberto alluded to that and explained that really clearly earlier. I just listed a couple 
or several of the uh, implementations on the screen, these types of positions that would be the entree for the CCO. So the CCO is its own separate position, but if your organization didn't have that kind of position already, these are the types of people that would recognize immediately the need for the CCO position. So with the curriculum, we have a syllabus which outlines what the presentations will be, outlines an agenda similar to what we have here that I've shown you already. Then there are the lessons. And along with the lessons that are available in the packet, we also have uh, variations that go along with a teaching manual. So not only will those who implement the CCO curriculum have the book, that's uh, Roberto's book, but also you have the teaching manual potentially and the quote unquote workbook that you could utilize with the, the lessons based on the book. And then those lessons in the workbook are punctuated by case studies and they're in different implementations according to that list, uh, diplomats, city leaders, campaign personnel, there are different case studies that would fit those different environments. Think of that, uh, this is a figure. The chief cultural office, officer is very important, not only in the business company, but also in, uh, at the political level, because uh, 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 the culture miss now in politics and uh, we need more cultural support, more cultural uh, uh, help because uh, I think that uh, uh, the politics without culture uh, doesn't work. And uh, now in this world so complicated, in the geopolitical uh, uh, level, it's absolutely indispensable to have one cultural support. Is a figure, is another politician uh, uh, more stronger than uh, me or the, than other? I don't know. Uh, we will see in the future, but in any case, it's very important uh, this uh, help because uh, the, 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 the total comprehension uh, about what happens in the world now is very complicated. Uh, and given all that's happening, Roberto, I, I'm really glad that you're doing what you're doing right now uh, with the Chief Cultural Officer certification efforts. Uh, and the, the world has never been more integrated. The, the world has never been smaller. Uh, and it's more important now than ever to have an understanding of the culture uh, in which you're operating, whether it's business, uh, NGOs, uh, politics. Um, it's never been more important to have a crystal clear understanding of the culture and of the uh, really everything uh, that, that is happening and, and that is expected uh, in the nations and regions where you operate, where you do business or where you do your uh, non-governmental uh, organization, nonprofit work, or political work. And so, Roberto, I'm glad that your Renaissance Evolution uh, efforts are happening in this space. It's more important than ever. I've been doing this now for 34 years. Kind of conceptual discussion about these areas. And just from your first piece, let me go back to our previous slide here to see that the, you've, we've got these eight pillars. Again, their principles and kind of the, uh, the application. So eight pillars, three categories, learning, economics, and impact. We're gonna talk through each one of these specifically, and we're going to give some cases for you to contemplate and to, hopefully to put them into some 
area of practice. All right, so let's start with the learning pillars. There are three in the learning pillars, culture and education, health and happiness, and transparency and ethics. By way of definition in the learning pillars, there are three components that are really critical here. Competence and humility will, uh, is, is important, well-being, and then ethics. And the context of those, you, you may have heard about those in different uh, other trainings around concepts of diversity and inclusion, um, organizational behavior in some sense, but also definitely in community interaction. We actually have cultural competence and cultural humility specifically as trainings. If you've been to a more recent and updated cultural competence training, it's now called cultural humility. It's essential for this new stage of humanity. Uh, Senator Cassini was mentioned something of that, uh, your friend Phillips also. But for me, uh, pol politics is the management of the public space that we all share. And although I work mainly in civil society, everything ends up being political. And that's why I think it is very important to understand and deepen around culture. Specifically, people cannot move forward sustainably without that economic opportunity. And so in the context of corporate governance, corporate philanthropy, we're asking also, how does the organization, the corporation act responsibly to address those opportunities? Different policies in different locales, or they change that policy across the board because they recognize it either doesn't fit culture or it doesn't really serve a purpose. Um, one, uh, one great example of that is corporations who provide uh, different and optional types of workspaces and gaming and play during business hours. First of all, thank you for the invitation, guys. And, and Dr. Michael, it was, was a great presentation. So thanks, thanks for all the information. I wouldn't say I reached the top of Puma yet, um, but, but yeah, it's been, it's been a journey the last couple of years. <clears throat> I think it's not only the sports industry, but in general, the, the sports, fashion, and retail industry is going through, through this shift. What we've been talking about in the last couple of hours um, we discuss topics like uh, reform, so ethical, social reform. We discuss topics like sustainability, um, corporate ethics, and, and all of these are interlinked into what, um, what a company is aiming for you. Michael, you, you talk about the vision and the mission of a company. Right now, in, in, in our industry, this is all in sync. So it's, it's a synergy between ethics, between social responsibility, between the, the company mission and vision, and it all goes into the same direction. 